uh, tunakuja miguuni pako uh, siku hii ya sabato tunakushukuru kwa sababu wewe Mungu ni Mungu mwenye upendo na umeweza kutupa nafasi hii ili tuweze kushiriki neno lako tunapoenda kuhubiri na kushiriki katika neno lako tunakuomba Mungu uweze kuwa pamoja nasi ili yale ambayo utaweza kuyanena yaweze kuwa ya faida kwa ajili ya watoto wako na kuomba uweze kushusha roho mtakatifu aweze kunitumia kama chombo kwa sababu mimi ni mwanadamu mimi ni dhaifu siwezi nitumie tu kama chombo ili ujumbe ambao ungenuia watoto wako waweze kupata siku ya leo waweze kupata na na kwamba Mungu uweze kutuondolea distraction zote ambazo shetani anaweza kuziweka ili tusiweze kusikiza neno lako hata wale ambao ni washiriki wa kanisa ya uh, Nairobi West ambao wamekosa umeme tunakuomba uweze kufanya jambo ili waweze kupata ili waweze kurudi katika mtandao ili tuweze kushiriki neno pamoja tunakuomba hata hizi machines tunatumia computers internet tunakuomba Mungu uweze kufikiria kwa sababu mara nyingi shetani uweza kutumia mambo haya ili neno lako liziweze kupenya kufikia wana wako pia tunakuomba Mungu uweze kufungua mioyo yetu na roho zetu ili tutakapoenda kushiriki tuweze kusikia ujumbe ambao ungependa tuweze kupata mchana wa leo ili ndilo ombi letu tunaomba kwa kitendo la Yesu Kristo aliye bwana na muombezi wetu amina Uh, kwa wakati huu asante na shukuru sana uh, kwa, kwa wakati huu uh, ningependa tuweze uh, kuingia katika ujumbe wetu katika siku hii ya sabato uh, nilipoalikwa kunena na sisi uh, nilieleza kuambiwa kwamba sabato ya leo ni siku ya maombi na kufunga hiyo ndio uh, sabato ama hiyo ndio idara ambayo inaongoza siku ya leo na katika siku hii uh, ya kufunga katika kanisa letu la Kiadventista kwa sasa siku ya leo ni siku ya mia moja kwa sile siku mia moja za maombi siku ya leo ndio uh, siku hizo zinaweza kufika mwisho uh, na wa kanisa le, kwa jumla ulimwenguni kote washiriki wamekuwa waki, wakiombea mambo mengi sana aswa janga la corona ambalo limeweza kuadhiri ulimwengu wote kwa njia uh, ya kiuchumi kwa njia mimi uh, watu wameweza kuadhiriwa uh, lakini siku ya leo uh, tunapokamilisha uh, siku hizi mia moja za maombi sijui sisi kama kanisa ama kama familia pale nyumbani tumekuwa na burden ipi ama mzigo upi wa maombi katika siku hizi ama sijui kama tumekuwa tukifuatilia Uh, mafundisho ambao kanisa ilikuwa imewaradhesha yaweze kuwa mwongozo kuna siku niliweza kufuatilia lakini kwa sababu ya shughuli zingine siku zingine siku kufuatilia yote uh, lakini katika siku hizo mia moja kulikuwa na mambo mengi sana ambayo watu walikuwa na shukuru mambo Mungu kwa kwayo kwa sababu Mungu ameweza kuwafanikisha katika maisha yao na pia kuna mambo mengi sana Uh, ambao watu wa, wamekuwa kiaombea katika sehemu kadhaa za ulimwengu wetu na 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 natumai uh, tunapomaliza sijui wewe ambao ambalo ulikuwa unaliombea ama Mungu ameweza kulitekeleza katika maisha yako lakini hiyo si hoja yangu kubwa ka, tunaweza kunena kuhusu maombi haya na umuhimu wao wakati wa mchana uh, lakini kwa uh, subuhi ya leo E, mada yangu kubwa ambayo Mungu aliweka katika moyo wangu ili tuweze kudiscuss ama tuweze kushiriki pamoja ni uh, 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 to watch and pray. Kwa sababu gani tunapaswa kuwa macho na pia tuweze uh, tu, 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 tuweze kuomba. Ah uh, tunapofuatilia mafundisho haya uh, ningependa tuweze kuangalia mada hiyo kubwa sana. Uh, acha ni niweze kutumia lugha ya kizungu ndio tuweze kuelewana vizuri uh, uh, the, the reason why we need to watch and pray why we as christians who are living in these last days uh, we supposed to watch and pray uh, that is uh, the topic that i want us to study this um, sabbath so that we can get exactly what god is asked to to get uh, our study 
he speak from the book of uh, the book of Luke. Uh, we read in the book of Luke, chapter book of Luke, chapter twenty-two, verses uh, verses forty. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I want us to, to realize something, friends. Uh, one thing that I want us to realize today is that we as Christians, we ought to follow Jesus Christ. We ought to follow Christ uh, in everything that Jesus Christ did uh, did uh, in the Bible. In, in his life, uh, uh, the, the life of Christ should be able to be related in every aspect, uh, even as we are waiting for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you see, uh, in the book of, uh, as we shall come back to the book of Luke chapter 22, I want us to study uh, uh, the book of Revelation chapter 14. Uh, the book of uh, Revelation chapter 14, that is uh, where we're going to pick our first text today. The book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 4, uh, I'm going to read uh, to us. Uh, the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 4, the Bible says, uh, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamp, uh, the lamp whatsoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, uh, being the first fruits uh, unto God and to the lamp. In this book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 4, uh, the Bible brings to us a group of people who are told that they are not defiled. They're, 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 the Bible says they are virgins, meaning that they are pure, they are not polluted. And the Bible goes ahead to say that these are they which follow, follow the lamp with soever a God. So here we get a group of people in the last days, because we realize that Revelation chapter 14 verse 4 is addressing uh, a group of people who are going to live in the last days before the second coming of Jesus Christ. And these people, we are told, they follow the lamp with soever he goeth. So our, our, our desire, or rather my burden to us today, is that we may learn something in the life of Jesus Christ that we ought to emulate even in these last days. That is something that I want us to learn this day. And in this particular instant, I want us to focus on the last scenes of Jesus Christ just before he went to the to the cross or rather just around the time that he was about to die what was his experience and how did he prepare even for his death so that he can make sure that our salvation uh, is established or rather our salvation is a, is achieved and uh, we are the people that we should we are the people who should be following Jesus Christ in everything that he did so uh, and when you read the book desire of ages page 83 we are told something about the life of Jesus Christ that we ought to do as Christians in the book desire of ages chapter i mean page 83 we are told there that it will be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in contemplation of the life of Christ, we should take it point by point and let the imagination grasp each scene, especially the closing scenes. I will repeat that quotation. The book is Desire of Ages. For those who are writing, we can write Desire of Ages, page 83, whereby we are told that it will be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in contemplating uh, of the life of Christ, we should take it point by point and let the imagination grasp its sin, especially the closing sins. We are told, friends, that as Christians who are living in the last days, we should be able to uh, spend some hour every day uh, contemplating on the life of Christ. We should be in a position whereby we take it point by point and let the imagination grasp each sin, especially the closing sins. This is the reason why we should, I pick this title that we are discussing this Sabbath. Uh, the title is that uh, our need to watch and pray. Where are we supposed, why are we supposed to watch and pray as Christians living in these last days? And why does inspiration tell us that we should spend much uh, like an hour every day contemplating concerning the life of Jesus? 
especially the closing scenes uh, of his life. And we should focus our thoughts on what Christ was trying to uh, was, was going through in his closing scenes, and we should take some uh, some time contemplating on those closing scenes. There is there's a reason why we are told that, and that is what I want us to realize uh, this Sabbath. So uh, as we've been reading, uh, we are called Christians. Why are we call, called Christians? We are called Christians because uh, we are called Christians because we follow Jesus Christ. You see, the, the first time people were called Jesus Christ Christians, uh, it is the time when people looked uh, on the apostles, the early disciples of Jesus Christ. And when they looked uh, on their lives, they saw that the lives of these Christians, or rather these apostles, were like, uh, were similar, like the life of Jesus Christ. So these people, they named them Christians because they were like Jesus Christ. And that is why even us, if we want to follow Jesus, we should spend much time contemplating on the life of Jesus, contemplating on the life uh, that how Christ lived, or rather how Christ operated during his closing scenes just before he was crucified. Why? Because when Jesus, just before Jesus was crucified, he went through a crisis. And that is something that we need to realize that the, the, the experience uh, Jesus had just before he was crucified was a very serious experience and we are told that even us none of us could ever be allowed to go through the shame and that is why jesus died so that we cannot go through the ordeal that he went through but uh there's an experience also that we have to partake of him uh, mostly we should uh we should check how he lived how he prayed how he lived so that we can emulate his life so that we can be in a position whereby we can be able to become overcomers in these last days. That is something uh, that I want us to check. So in the book of, of Luke, uh, where we took our text, in the book of Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 22, the book is Luke chapter 22, uh, verses 39. Uh, I want somebody to read for us the book is Luke 22, beginning verses 39 to 46. Somebody there to read with us? Yes, the Bible says, uh -huh. And uh, he came out and went, as he, was as he was wont, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou wilt be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep you? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. So we, we, we want to learn something from the book of Luke chapter 22, beginning verse 39 to 46. Jesus is going to get the semane, and uh, we, together with him, we take three of his closest disciples. That was Peter, uh, John, and James. And when they go to that mountain, Jesus was preparing for his crucifixion. Because uh, before that, we realized that uh, uh, Judas, the, uh, the, the betrayer, had gone ahead to bring about the Roman soldiers so that they can come and arrest Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ understood that at that particular time he was to be separated with his uh, disciples. And uh, he was to go through uh, an experience that uh, is very serious. And that is why he took three of these disciples so that they can pray together with him, so that they can be his, 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 his prayer partners, so that they can, that from their prayers, he can be able to be strengthened, so that he can be ready to go through that uh, 
cruci uh, crucifixion that he was ready to go through. He was getting ready to go through. And that is why now he comes to this particular time. He, he used to have a secret place of prayer. We realize that Jesus used to spend most of his time in the mountains, in nature, to commune with his God. So that he can be able to find strength to go through his daily uh, uh, trials in life. And now this last experience that Jesus was getting ready to go through was a serious experience. And that is why he takes together with him the three disciples that he loved the most, who were closest to him. And in verse 40, we read, he's, told, he's telling them that we, 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 we are told, uh, we are told uh, that, uh, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray uh, that ye enter not into temptation. Jesus is telling these disciples that the reason why they should be able to pray, it is that uh, they should not enter into temptation. Friends, even us, I want to encourage us this Sabbath day that the reason why we should be much into prayer, it is so that we can be able to be in a position whereby we are not going to go through temptation because we realize that Jesus was in 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 one of the mo in one of his trying moments in his life, and he he never took much time to pray. He was to fall into temptation. And what are these temptations that Jesus was trying to avoid going through, or rather, what are these temptations that Jesus never wanted his disciples? not to fall into. I want us to read in the book of Mark, Mark recording the same experience. The book is Mark uh, chapter, the book is Mark chapter 13. Sorry, we're going to read the book of Mark chapter 14, <coughs> verses 46. The Bible says, Mark chapter 14, verse 46, the Bible says, and they laid their hands on him, and took him. And one of them that stood by, that is Peter, uh, drew a sword and smote a servant, of, a servant of the high priest, and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are you, uh, are you come out as against a thief? And, uh, and the swords, and with swords and with staffs to take me. Verse 49 says, I was daily with you in the temple teaching and he took me out. He took me not, but the scripture must be fulfilled. Verse 50, and they all fled him, uh, and they all forsook him and fled him. Friends, in the in the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 50, we see that uh, Jesus realized that these disciples were, were, if they never prayed, they were to forsake Jesus and leave him. So that is why Jesus was calling them, so that they cannot come to this serious temptation of of fleeing and forsaking Jesus when Jesus mostly needed them. And that is why we are told that even us in these last days, we are supposed to be much into prayer. And the reason why we should be much into prayer, it is because we we are going to come to a point whereby many of us are going to be uh, uh, forsaken by our beloved ones. Many of us, our, our, our loved ones are going to flee from us. And for us to be in a position whereby we are to stand firm for the truth in these last days, we are to be people who are much into prayer. We are to be people who are much into the studying of the word of God. So that when that time comes, we are not going to flee from Jesus Christ. We are not going to forsake our faith and give up the faith that we've been uh, living in for many years. Because, friends, uh, uh, we, one thing that I want us to realize is that uh, in these last days that we are living in, we are going to go through the same crisis, the same crisis that even Jesus Christ went through during his time. And uh, in the book of, uh, in the book of, in the book of uh, Luke chapter 21, uh, verses 36, the same admonition that Jesus gives to his disciples in the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 40, it's the same admonition that Jesus is giving us who are going to live in the last days, just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. And in the book of Luke chapter 21, the book of Luke chapter 21 verse 36, 
Watch, listen what the Bible says. Jesus telling people who are going to live just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. He says that, watch ye therefore. Friends, the same admonition that Jesus gave to his disciples when they were going to that mountain of Gethsemane to pray is the same admonition that is given to us who are living in the last days. And he's telling us in the book of Luke, chapter uh, 21, verse 36, he's saying that, watch ye therefore. And pray always that he may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus is telling the, the, the people living in the last days in our generation, I believe we are the people that this verse uh, in the book of Luke 21 verse 36 is targeting. We are told that watch ye therefore and pray. That is my admonition. My big question is, are we watching and praying in our families? Are we spending much time with our God? We're going to see why is watching and praying necessary, especially to us who are living in these last days. The reason I want to suggest to us in the book of, uh, the same book, the same book of Luke chapter 19 now, uh, verses uh, 41 to 44. I want somebody to read with us the book of Luke chapter 19 verses 41 to 44 we are we, we want to uh, listen or rather we want to identify from the bible the reason why we need to watch and pray especially we who are living in these last days that is something that i want us to to get uh, as we continue somebody to help us read in the book of luke chapter 19 verse 41 to 44 the bible says and when he was come near he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou had known, even thou, at least in this day, the things which, be, which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even in the ground, and thy children within thee and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. So this is, this is a time when Jesus uh, uh, was, ex or later was making some explanation concerning the, the city of Jerusalem. In the book of Luke 19, verse 41 to 44, Jesus, we are told that when he came near that, that city, he, he looked at the city, I believe, uh, Jerusalem was a big city like Nairobi today. And I believe if Jesus was, was near Nairobi today, as he was near Jerusalem during that time, the same words, friends, he spoke to Jerusalem, are the same words that he will speak to the inhabitants of the city of Nairobi today. And what is this Jesus is saying in the book of Luke 19, verse 42? Listen keenly, he says that, If thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Verse 43, for the day, for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee around and keep thee in one on uh, in on every side. Verse 44 says, and and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the times of thy visitation. Jesus was trying to tell the inhabitants of the city of Jerusalem uh, that there was coming a time in the near future. Jesus was giving a prophecy. That actually happened in the year 17 AD, 17 AD, AD 70, when we are told in history, when you read the history books, we are told that the, the, the Roman soldiers led by... Uh, uh, Titus, uh, the general of Rome, then compassed the city of, uh, of, of Jerusalem, and we are told that most of the inhabitants that were living in that city, almost one million people, were slain by, by General Cetius and, the, and his army. And that is why even us who are living in these last days, we, we understand that we are getting closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And as we read in the book of Revelation chapter 13, 
uh, verses 11 to verses 17, there we are told that there are, there are serious things that are going to happen in our world today, and we need to prepare. And one thing, friends, that we need to realize is that if we don't spend much time in prayer and studying the word of God, we are going to be like Peter. You see, the reason why Jesus told Peter uh, in the book of Luke chapter 22, verses uh, 40, to, to pray that they should not enter into temptation, it is because that Jesus understood that they, that they were going to be offended. When, that, uh, when the Roman soldiers were coming to take Jesus Christ, they are going to be, uh, their tempers are going to rise, and they are going to do things that are not supposed to do as Christians. So for them to be in a position whereby they can control their temper, they were to enter into a prayer experience so that the Holy Spirit of God can take possession of them so that when they are tried, they are not going to fall into that temptation. Friends, even us today, the reason why we fail, the reason why we commit sin, the reason why we, 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 we lose faith in God, the reason why we doubt God, the reason why we commit some sins in our lives, it is not because we are bad Christians. It is because we don't spend quality time with God in prayer. And that is why we need to realize that in these last days that we are living in, we need to come to an experience whereby we, are, we love God so much. We spend quality time with him so that when the trying moment come in our lives, we are going to be able to be overcomers. And that is why in the book of James, in the book of James, we are told about temptation. The book of James chapter 1. Listen, the, the, book, of, the book of James chapter 1, uh, verses 12. Being tempted is not sin, but falling into tem tem temptation is sin. And the reason why we, we need to realize this is because when you read in the book of James chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says something that blessed is the man that, that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. We are told that the reason why we should endure temptation, it is because when we overcome temptation, we are going to receive the crown. But for us to be in a position whereby we are to overcome the temptations, we have to pray, we have to watch, we have to be in a position where, whereby we are watching daily, we are in prayer, in a prayer experience, so that we can be able to overcome these temptations. Because we are told that there is a blessing in overcoming temptation. Why? Because when you overcome this temptation, you're going to receive the crown of, of righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why Jesus understood this thing. And that is why he understood that the crisis was coming ahead of him. And he ought to prepare his disciples for what was coming uh, before in their lives. And that is why he took them and uh, told them that they should be able to enter into this prayer uh, a united prayer so that they can be able to be in a position whereby they can be able to be overcomers. Friends, I want to read with us a quotation from the book Steps to Christ. The reason why we need to pray, I, I recommend to us that we may study this book Steps to Christ. Uh, there is that chapter 11 which is called uh, that uh, uh, that is called uh, the privilege of prayer. Uh, Steps to Christ chapter 11 the privilege of prayer. In this uh, particular uh, uh, book, uh, we want to read uh, in page 98, paragraph 1, we are told that uh, Steps to Christ, uh, Steps to Christ, uh, page 98, paragraph 1, uh, we are told that we should, uh, we should, we should pray in the family circle, and above all, we should, we should not neglect sacred prayer, for this is the life of the soul. Listen, friends, we are told that we should pray in the family circle. My big question to us, friends, this Sabbath, do we pray in our families? Or we, we are caught up in the, in the activities of this big city until we don't have much time to pray as our, in our families. Uh, and that is why we need to realize that there is a, a day in, in our prayer life, we should realize that we should pray in the family circle. The Bible, I mean, the Spirit of Prophecy continues to say in this book, Steps to Christ, page 98, paragraph 1, 
we should pray in the family circle. And above all, we must not neglect secret prayer, for this is the life of the soul. It is impossible for the soul to flourish while prayer is neglected. You see, the greatest challenge with our Seventh-day Adventists or other Christians is that yeah, even me, it's a challenge. We may talk about prayer. We may preach about prayer. We may talk much more about prayer, but if we don't pray, we don't get the blessing of prayer. The reason, the same reason we sit in the life of Jesus, that Jesus spent time to pray, but the disciples went to sleep. And when the crisis came, instead of Peter getting relaxed and calm, he took his sword and cut off and cut the, the, the ear of that priest servant. But when Jesus was taken, he was calm and relaxed. And that is why Jesus was able not to commit sin, even when he was in his trying moment of his life. And that is why here we are admonished as Christians that we should spend much more time in sacred prayer. Friends, in these last days that we are living, it is not our academic qualification that is going to give us victory to overcome the challenges of life. It is not the, the, the size of our bank accounts that is going to help us in the crisis that is soon to break before this world. It is the experience that we have with God in our prayer chamber. It is the experience that we have with God in our family circles, in, our, in the family devotions. It is the experience that we have with God in the studying of his word. For when we do that, we get the experience that will help us when we go through the trying uh, times of our lives. And that is why we need to remember this thing uh, in the book, in the book, First uh, Corinthians chapter eleven. Remember, our topic this Sabbath day is the need to watch and pray. That is why we are going to understand from the Word of God why do we need to watch and pray? In the book First Corinthians chapter eleven, uh, in the book of First Corinthians, uh, uh, I thank the brother who sharing the quotations on our chat. For those who who are, who are following. You can uh, copy them and go and study and take notes. We are studying in the book of First Corinthians chapter 11, uh, sorry, chapter 10, verse 13. I want somebody to read with us, to help us read that uh, verse. The Bible says, mm -hmm. There are no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will put mm -hmm. not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So here we are told that the temptations that we receive as Christians are common. But the reason why most of us Christians fall into temptation is because it is not because the temptations are, are serious. It is not because of anything else. It is because we have not had an experience with God. Because if you are uh, 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 accustomed to making lies, if you are accustomed to unfaithfulness in, in your actions, the reason why you are unfaithful, have you taken time to tell Jesus about your unfaithfulness? Are you take, have you taken time to talk to Jesus about your weaknesses? Because here we are told that there is no temptation that is taken new, but such is common to man. But to God, uh, but God is faithful. We are told that God is faithful and there is no temptation in our lives that is too big to Jesus Christ. And that is why we need to realize that uh, for us to overcome these temptations, the source of power that we need is Jesus Christ. And the only way that we can get this strength, it is to abide in Jesus. And the way that Jesus has the road or rather the path that Jesus has made for us to be in a position whereby we can overcome, it is by entering into a prayer experience with him so that we can be able to be overcomers. That is why we are, we are encouraged in this particular text that uh, there is no temptation that is too big. But you remember now uh, uh, concerning the case of the apostles of Jesus Christ in the book of Luke chapter 22, whereby is our key study text this Sabbath, uh, Luke 22, verses 41, uh, verses 41 to uh, 41 to 46, these disciples actually fell. The reason why they fell it is because it is because they never entered into that prayer life that Jesus uh, was uh, had admonished them to enter. That is why in verse 41, Luke 22, verse 41, we are told that 
and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and knelt down and prayed. Verse 42 says, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy, thy will be done. Verse 43 says, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Friends, we are told that in this particular text, verse 43, that when Jesus entered into that prayer experience, do you know what happened? It is that God sent angels. And at that particular time when he began to pray, the angels came to strengthen him. This reminds me of in the book of Daniel chapter 9. You remember when Daniel actually was praying, the book of Daniel chapter 9, when Daniel was going through a crisis in his life. Let us check the book of Daniel. No, Daniel chapter 9 verse 21. Somebody to read for us. The Bible Daniel says... Daniel chapter 9 verse 21. Huh? The Bible says, Yeah, while I was mm -hmm. speaking to prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Mm -hmm. You see, in this particular time, you see Daniel, when you study prophecy in the book of Daniel chapter 8, Daniel saw a prophecy that he was not able to comprehend. And that is why in chapter 9, Daniel begins to pray. And the Bible records that here, Daniel chapter 9 verse 21, that while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, you see Gabriel is the big angel, is the chief angel. After Lucifer fell, Gabriel took the place of Lucifer. And when Daniel now is in this prayer experience, uh, Gabriel is being sent by God to come and make Daniel understand. Friends, when you pray, God sends angels. When you pray, God sends angels. So the reason why Jesus prayed in the book of Luke chapter 22 uh, it is because he understood his weakness while he was human and he needed divine help so that he can be able to overcome the trying moments that he was getting ready to enter into. Even as friends, we, get, we need to get acquainted with God in prayer so that we may be able to, to get help in time of our need. Friends, uh, you see the reason why most of us we neglect prayer uh, it is because we have not realized the need that we need. We have not realized, we have not uh, actually realized the magnitude of help that we need. We think uh, in our own human abilities, we can be able to go through the trying moments of our lives. Uh, but friends, uh, that is not true. We need much more help that we actually uh, we desire ourselves. The, the need of strength that uh, is necessary for us to go through these last days in our generation is much more uh, bigger than we think. That is why we need to wake up from our sleep, uh, not to behave like the disciples, this Peter, John, and James, whom while Jesus was uh, seriously in prayer, then they were sleeping. That is something that we need to realize. So when you continue reading in the book of Luke chapter 22, Something that uh, you get to realize that, uh, verse 43, the Bible told us that, and there appeared an angel unto him uh, from heaven, strengthening him. Verse 44 says, and beginning and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Friends, have you ever been in that agony like Jesus Christ was and prayed much more earnestly? That is even a challenge to me. Uh, friends, we need to come to uh, the realization that we are weak human beings. And without Jesus Christ in our lives, we cannot. Jesus understood his nature. Jesus understood his condition. And that is why he agonized with God in prayer until angels were sent to strengthen him. It is not that Jesus, you see many people, many a times when they look uh, to the life of Jesus, they say that the reason why Jesus was able to overcome it is because he was God. Jesus, we are told that he never used his divine abilities to overcome any challenge. He relied on the Father solely, even as us, we're supposed to rely on God so that we can be able to overcome our challenges in our times. Jesus never exercised his divine power to overcome any challenge in his life. That is why he came here to leave us human beings, to leave us one of us, to teach us how we need to overcome. And that is why he went to the mountain to pray 
so that, uh, that because he understood uh, without the power of God in his life, he could not overcome the challenge that he was going through. So, friends, even us, as we continue in this life in our generation, we need to realize that we need the Gethsemane experience. Daily, we need to seek God in our lives so that we can get this power that we need to overcome temptations in these last days. So, in the book of uh, in the book of uh, in the book of Hebrews chapter four, we are given a promise in that book. The book is Hebrews chapter four. The book of Hebrews chapter four, uh, verse fifteen and sixteen. Somebody to read to help us read the book of Hebrews chapter four, verses fourteen and fifteen. Hebrews chapter four, verses fifteen and sixteen. I uh, begin verse fourteen to sixteen. Sorry. It says. Mm -hmm. See then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Uh, actually, in this particular verse, we are admonished in verses 16 that let us therefore understanding that Jesus was tempted, that Jesus went through the trials even as we go through. We are told that verse 15 of, of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, the Bible says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Friends, Jesus was like us. Jesus was a hundred percent human that is why he is able to sympathize with our needs when we go through trial he is able to feel us he, is, he understands what we go through and that is why he taught us that when we go through such experiences we follow his pattern and that is to have the Gethsemane experience that is that we may go and seek after him we may go and seek that help because in verse 16 he says that let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need friends i believe all of us today we need help uh, there are some sins that are, are strong in our lives that we are addicted to some sins in our lives and we need this strength to overcome these challenges that we face through i don't know what exactly we are battling within our lives all of us we are in different levels of our christian growth and there are some challenges that we're going through in our families in our our secret lives there are some challenges we're going through as a family financially all these things we need divine help so that we can be able to sort out these problems but how 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 how, how many of us spend much time to tell god about how little we spend time talking to god about our problems how little time we spend uh, explaining to god our need explaining to god our our wants our friends it is high time that we may be able to wake up from sleep so that we can be able to uh, seek Jesus more earnestly so that we can be able to overcome. It also reminds me of the life of Jesus. There is a, power, a powerful verse in that same book of Hebrews when you jump to chapter 5 of Hebrews. Uh, somebody to read verse 7. Chapter 5 verse 7 of Hebrews. That is the most powerful verse concerning the life of Jesus that we need to emulate so that we can be able to be victorious in our time. The book is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible says, The Bible who, says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with strong crying and tears unto him, that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. Mm -hmm. Verses 8, uh, though, 8 and 9. Though he were a son, Yet learned, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Uh, friends, this is Paul. Uh, Paul, through inspiration, is backdating back and giving us an exposition about the life of Jesus Christ. In verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 5, we are told that in the days of flesh, this is Jesus Christ, 
what did Jesus do? We are told that when he had uh, offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to shave him uh, from death and was sad in that he feared. Paul is giving an exposition of what Jesus did in the just in the verse that we've read in Luke chapter 22 that uh, he went to that mountain to pray and actually he offered these prayers with much uh, tears strong crying actually in his life and that is why we are told that and he was hard because he feared friends when we honestly seek the face of God when when we honestly commune with God and agonize with God in prayer uh, God actually understands very well that we have come to a position whereby or other condition we understand that without him we are not going to survive and actually because of that he actually sees our need and is able to answer our need because when we when we feel weak god is made strong in our lives when we see our nothingness that is the point whereby now jesus comes into our help but when we see ourselves superior when we see ourselves that we can make it in our own strength, uh, by that now we allow the tempter to come in. But when we realize that without Jesus, our life is nothing. Without Jesus, we are not going to make it. Thereby now we call uh, into now the power of Jesus Christ in our lives. That is why we need to realize that we should em emulate this life of Jesus. That when Jesus uh, was in his life as flesh, he, he, he sought the face of God. He sought the divine power because he understood that without the divine power in his life, he was not able to make it. That is why even uh, in the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 35, somebody to read the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 35, even as we make the final points now, bring this to our uh, application in our time. Mark 1 35. The Bible says, And mm -hmm. in the morning... Rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Friends, there we can study about the life of Jesus, that the habit of Jesus, uh, you see, the, the, for you to have the Gethsemane experience, the reason why Jesus was able to pray that and agonize with the Father in the closing scenes of his life, it is not something that he prayed uh, one time. Like uh, one time, uh, it was not his first time to pray like that. It was his custom. It was his habit to spend much time with God in prayer. That is why when he went through the crisis, he was able to be calm, to be relaxed, so that uh, he overcame on our behalf. Uh, for us also to have that experience, we have to cultivate the habit of praying continually having set times during the day to pray so that we can cultivate that experience so that when the crisis comes, we may be able to be in a position whereby we are overcomers. Uh, also, uh, in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 12, Luke chapter 6 verse 12, we are getting some points from the life of Jesus Christ. It was not his first time to pray like that. Somebody to read quickly Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Luke 6, 12, the Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. So even here we are told that Jesus used to spend quality time in prayer. That is why he was able to overcome. So in the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 12, we see that Jesus spends long nights in prayer. That is why he was able to be in a position whereby he was an overcomer. That is, now you see, because of that now, when the crisis comes, you see, friends, during a crisis, we don't develop character. We develop character before the crisis. The reason why the foolish virgins were locked out of the, 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 the bridegroom party, they never had the experience before. Their character was revealed. They were never serious about their Christian experience so that when the crisis came at that midnight, they were not prepared for the bridegroom. Even as if we don't cultivate our, our, our prayer life, you see, even in families, uh, friends, if you are a mother or father in this congregation today, uh, you need to teach your young kids to pray for themselves. 
to, that they may develop a living experience because when the crisis will break before our, our lives, uh, uh, even children are going to go through the crisis as young children. Parents, mothers are going to go through the crisis as mothers. Uh, every, everybody is going to go through that trying moment. That is why as family members, if you are a mother, train your child to spend time with God secretly uh, uh, in prayer. Through that, you are helping the young kid to develop an experience with God. So that, that they, they are not going to give up like the, the disciples gave up during the trying moment. You see, friends, uh, when, when you read, uh, I'm going to share a screen uh, uh, here in the book. Uh, 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 the book is uh, Testimonies. Uh, can you see my screen? Eh? Yes, we can see it. Uh, uh, testimonies uh, for the for the church, volume two. Uh, two or four, uh, paragraph uh, two. I'm reading there. It says that, uh, rising from his prostrate position. He came to his disciples and found them sleeping. Uh, he said unto Peter, Watch, what? Could you not watch uh, with me one hour? Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit instead uh, is willing, but the flesh is weak. At the most important time, uh, the time when, Je when Jesus, uh, when Jesus had had made a special request for them to watch with him, the disciples were found sleeping. He knew that uh, severe, he knew that severe conflicts and terrible temptations were before them. He had taken them with him uh, that they might be uh, a strength uh, to him. And that the events they should witness that night and the lessons of instruction they should receive might be uh, indelibly printed into their memories. This was necessary that their faith might, might not fail, but be strengthened uh, for the test just before them. But instead of watching with Christ, they were burdened with sorrow and fell asleep. Even the ardent Peter, who only a few hours before had declared uh, that he would suffer and, uh, and if need be die for, the Lord, for his Lord, was asleep. Now listen to this uh, to this particular statement. At the most critical moment, when the Son of God was in need of their sympathy and heartfelt prayers, they were found asleep. They lost much by sleeping. You see, friends, you see, when we sleep, we lose much. When we neglect our devotions, when we neglect our family worship because we are too busy, we lose much. Because, you see, you cannot quantify the experience you lose when you miss you skip your prayer when you skip your devotion but here we can read clearly that we lose much when we neglect our quality time with god it continues to say that our savior designed to fortify them uh, for the severe test of their faith uh, to which they could soon be subjected if they had spent that mon uh, moneyful period in watching uh, in watching with the dear savior and in prayer to god Peter will not have been left to his own feeble strength to deny his Lord uh, in the time of trial. Uh, so you see the reason why you see when you read the book, I mean the book Great Controversy, page six hundred and eight, paragraph two. There we are told that uh, uh, when the, when the crisis that is soon to come before us, that is the Sunday law, we are told that a large portion of the Seventh Day Adventist people are going to give up their faith and join the side of the enemy. The reason being, it's not that they are bad Christians. It is because they never developed an experience with Jesus. That is why uh, when we don't develop that experience today, when we have these peaceful moments, we are going to lose much. You see, we are told, uh, uh, like the corona pandemic crisis that we are in, uh, studies are showing that many people are getting mad, insane. Many people are getting into depression. I, I was seeing in the news the other day that most teachers who are teaching in private schools uh, have gotten into depression because their salaries have been cut into a half. You see now, this is not the real crisis, 
But this is a mini crisis of what the real crisis that is going to come ahead of us in the near future. And if we have not learned to depend on Jesus, we are going to give up. Because in that crisis, as you read in the book of Revelation chapter 13, beginning verse 11 to 17, we are told that the great issue will be on the issue of buying and selling. And uh, if we have not learned to depend on God for our needs, we are going to get depressed to a position whereby we are, some people are going to get heart attacks. Some people are going to give up because they cannot stand for the truth, because they have to feed their family. They are going to give up their faith and join the other side because they want uh, to acquire the basic needs of life. And that is why today God has given us even the corona pandemic to, to help us learn to depend on God so that when the, the real crisis comes, we may be able to have obtained uh, or rather we have qualified from these classes that God is giving us today so that we can be able to overcome uh, uh, during uh, that uh, time. The, uh, when you continue reading that, we are told at the most critical moment uh, uh, when the Son of God was in the need of their sympathy, their heartfelt prayers, they were found asleep. They lost much by their uh, sleeping. We, when you read the uh, quotation in 205 paragraph 1, we're told that the, the Son of God went uh, the second time uh, and prayed saying, Oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, uh, thy will be done. And again he came to, the, uh, to his disciples found them sleeping. Their eyes were heavy. They, uh, by these sleeping disciples, now this is the, the key point that we need to realize, uh, sorry, uh, we are told uh, in this place uh, that I was highlighting, uh, we are told that uh, in this particular place, sorry, uh, at this particular point that I've highlighted black, it says by these sleeping disciples, is represented a sleeping church when the day of God's visitation is near. It is a time of clouds and thick darkness when to be found sleep, asleep is most perilous. Friends, uh, when I was reading this uh, particular portion of the spirit of prophecy, it, uh, it, it made me to think deeper. Here we are told that by these sleeping disciples is represented a sleeping church. So this, this uh, portion of scripture that we've read in the book of Luke chapter uh, 22 beginning verse 40, 40, 39 to 46 there we have seen that uh, uh, the exposition given to us concerning Peter, James and John who are sleeping, you see these were the closest of the disciples of Jesus but when Jesus needed them to, to pray together with Jesus they slept so these are like we are told these are like us, the remnant church in the last days that God has given us, God has brought us close to him, but we neglect our privileges. We neglect our duties and we enter into sleep. What are we doing to witness to those who don't know the truth in our time? Are we just being good Adventists that we pay our tithes, we, we, we do these services, we do everything, but we don't take a step of reaching out to others? That is a question that we need to ask ourselves. So we should not be found sleeping for, uh, in this critical time that we are living in. We should be able to be wide awake so that we should be very watchful so that we can we can be able to, to read the landmarks that Jesus is giving us even as we await a second coming. We should not be found sleeping because if we sleep, we are going to lose much friends. That is why we need to realize that uh, if we don't spend quality time with God in prayer, we are going to deny Jesus like actually, uh, like actually, uh, 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 Peter did deny Jesus. I want to put on the screen another quote, uh, even as we conclude our study this morning, in the book Great Controversy, uh, page 608, uh, 608, uh, whereby we are told something uh, special that, now, yeah, we are told, uh, as the storm approaches, you see, uh, this is great controversy, but 608 paragraph 2, we are told that as the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message, I believe that is you who is listening to me uh, and myself, 
we are those people who profess faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth. They are going to abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have become they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. And when uh, the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy popular side. Men of talent and pleasing address who once rejoiced in the truth, employ their powers to deceive and mislead souls. It continues to say that they become the most bitter enemies of their former brethren. Uh, when Sabbath keepers are brought before the courts to answer for their faith, these apostates are the one are the most efficient agents of Satan to misrepresent and accuse them. And they are uh, and and by false reports and insinuations, uh to stir up the rulers against them. That quotation actually is very serious. We are told that uh, this crisis will separate us. And that is why if we don't spend much time with God in prayer, here we see that professed preachers, professed elders in the church, professed pastors, leaders whom we esteem in our, in our congregations are going to give up and join the other ranks of the enemy. And because of that, they're going to become bitter enemies to us. You see, many people may say, are you sure that thing is going to happen? Actually, you, we can get it from the Bible in the book of Luke, not in the book of Luke, uh, uh, in, the, in the book of, uh, in the book of, uh, let me check, in the book of Mark, chapter, Mark chapter 13, yeah? verses 9. Somebody to read that. Are we together? The Bible says, But take heed to yourself, they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Uh, here, here Jesus is giving what is going to happen in the last days. He's saying that in these last days, that uh, there are going to be people who are going to uh, uh, persecute others. There are going to be people who are going to 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 uh, to uh, actually persecute people, and uh, it is going to be uh, it is not going to be a very good ordeal. So I want us also to check in the book of uh, the book of Luke, chapter twenty-one, verses sixteen and seventeen. Now to bring it home, how serious that time is going to be. He says, Luke, mm -hmm. and you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. So here we are told in the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 16, uh, uh, this is very serious. Eh? This now is coming to our family circles that and ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and king folks those people who are our cousins our grandparents our fathers friends and some of you shall be uh, shall they cause to be put off to death and and by uh, and ye shall be hated of all men for my my name's sake so jesus is telling his disciples that we christians who are going to live just before the second coming of Jesus, we, we're going to be hated. Even our family members are going to hate us because of the truth. That is why if we don't spend quality time with God in prayer, we are going to cut our families off, like Peter did to that uh, soldier, as, Jesus, as Peter also denied Jesus Christ. Because when Jesus had told them to pray, so that they are not going to enter into temptation, they slept and they lost much. Even as friends today, the probationary time that God has given us that we are alive in our church, it is to enable us to prepare for that time. That even when we are given up to the, to the counsels of men, when we are put in prison, in those dungeons, when we are persecuted, we don't retaliate, we, we don't abuse our, those, our persecutors, but as Jesus did when he was on that cross, he said that, forgive them.
for they don't know what I'm doing. But if Jesus had never spent that time in prayer, he was not going. He was. He could not have said the words that he said because actually he could be in a position whereby he's overwhelmed until he was not in a position to go to that cross. He could have saved himself. You see, the, the, the greatest temptation that Jesus had during his time, it was not to do anything, but it was to use his divine power to save himself from going to the cross. But because he understood that our salvation is at stake, he spent my time in prayer so that when that crisis time came, he was in a position whereby he could confidently go before that cross to establish our salvation. Friends, are you following Jesus Christ? Are you the number of those people in the book of Hebrews chapter 14 verse 4 that we, learned, what that we read that are following the Lamb whatsoever he goes? He goes? Are you following Jesus to get the same money? To be able to experience the same experience that he did so that when the Sunday law passes, when the real troubles come to our lives, we may be able to be in a position whereby we can be able to overcome. Yeah. And finally, now I want to bring it further home uh, in the book, in, in the in the testimonies to the church. Uh, testimonies for the church. Uh, we're going to read uh, 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 testimonies to the church, volume five, uh, four seventy two, paragraph two. Listen how uh, here now why we need to realize that uh, uh, we are to be in much prayer. Uh, we are told here in this quotation. Uh, I'm going to read uh, this portion that I've highlighted. Uh, we are told how to here. Uh, that let me zoom it at least so that it can be much more clearer. Uh, we are told uh, uh, we are told here let me begin from this particular point. It says that the remnant church will be brought uh, the remnant church will be brought into great trial and distress. Those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus will feel the are of the dragon and his hosts. Satan numbers the world as his subjects. He has gained control of the apostate churches. But here is a little company that are resisting his supremacy. If he could blot them from the earth, his triumph will be complete. As he influenced the heathen nation to destroy his life, so in the near future he will stir up, uh, he will stir up the wicked powers of the earth to destroy the people of God. All will be required to render obedience to human uh, edicts in violation of the divine law. Those who will be true to God and uh, uh, and be and to duty will be menaced, denounced, and proscribed. They will be betrayed by both by parents and brethren and kings, folks, and friends. Now listen to this first sentence here. It says that their only hope is in the mercy of God. Their only defense will be prayer. Friends, I want to finish with that uh, final sentence that their only hope is in the mercy of God. Their only defense will be prayer. Friends, we are told that we are going to go through the most trying times that have never never been experienced in this world. And that is why today we are assured that if we are in, into that divine experience with Jesus Christ, we shall never be over, overcome. Because we see that even though the devil was oh, killed Jesus on that cross, he was never overcome. Even as the, some of us may die, some of us may be put into prison, but if we are in an experience with Jesus, we are going to grow. We are going to go through that trying times. Those trying times calmly, without panic, without uh, without uh, retaliation, because we have understood whom we have believed. So, this Sabbath, friends, it is my prayer 
that even as we go through these trying moments of, of, of the history of mankind, we may learn daily that even as we prepare for that serious crisis that is coming ahead of us, we may be able to be in a position whereby we trust God with all our hearts that we are not going to give up because we have uh, learned how to develop that living experience with God so that we can be able to become overcomers in our generation. And may God bless you so much. That is my prayer that God is going to keep you and you're going to, if you have not learned to enter into the experience with God, may, may it be that during this COVID pandemic, uh, because we have much time at home, let us uh, learn to pray. Uh, let us learn to enter into fellowship with God individually as families, as a church, uh, so that when the real crisis comes, we may be able to have gone through our classes so that we cannot give up and retaliate even as the apostles did and fell during that time. Because we've seen very clearly that most of us are going to be abandoned. Most of us are, of us are going to be forsaken, even with our loved ones. What are we going to do then? We need a deeper experience with Jesus so that we can be able to be wise on how to treat those our persecutors, our those going to forsake us, even our loved ones, uh, so that we cannot sin against our God, and so that we can pray even for our friends, so that if they are getting ready to give up, they may be strengthened, even they may hold on to Jesus, even as we wait for him to come and take us home. May God bless you so much. Thank you. So let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Master, God, we want to thank you uh, uh, for your spoken to us distinctly this Shabbat day. Father, I want to pray in a special way that you may help us, that you may realize that we have a very need, great need of prayer to watch so that we can be able to be overcomers. That even as we are living in these last days, we may not become careless, we may not become indifferent, but we may realize that it is you that we need in our lives so that we can be able to overcome even in these last days. Let your will prevail. It's my prayer that you've spoken to each one of us personally, those who are following even on, on online, those who are listening in this congregation, Lord, I pray, dear Lord, that your blessings may be able to be upon us. May you guide us, may you strengthen us, and may you do for us what we can never do for ourselves, dear God. Uh, if, Lord, we are lazy in prayer, Lord, we pray that you may awaken our, our weak senses, that you may realize our need for the divine strength. For we've seen clearly that without your divine power, we cannot even overcome the smallest of all sins in our lives. Because the devil has been around for almost over 6,000 years. He has experience with us human beings. And without the divine strength of Jesus, we cannot be able to overcome him. So it is my prayer this Holy Shabbat day, dear Lord, that you may strengthen us and you may give us victory over the enemy of, of the soul. May you lead us now, even as we enter and progress with the Sabbath. May you continually be with us. Even in the afternoon session, Lord, we pray that you guide us and you may bring us back that we may share together. This is my prayer, trusting and believing in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Uh, Nashkuru sana. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, Tunaenda kupata the closing hymn. Ambayo um, ilikuwa number 500 uh, English hymnal. Ambayo ni 134 uh, uh, nyimbo za Kristo.
Sana Amen. Kwenda katika ma, ma, maikuri na kukarudi masaya ya arasiri. Kwa hivyo na insante sana, eh, kukitawanyika, kujiadaya kwa sababu ya kurudi masaya ya arasiri, hili tuwekele na sabato yetu na, ma, na makudiko ya arasiri. Masaande mungu wa siliki kutobarichi. Kwa hivyo kutobarichi. 